right, let's get into our next discussion now. Now, barring any last-minute changes, six judges who were suspended by the National Judicial Council on allegations of corruption will resume work today. The National Judicial Council recalled suspended Federal High Court Judge Adeni Yadimola and five other judges on Saturday. Three of the affected judges were charged or court, but only Adimola's case has so far been concluded. He was acquitted of the charge of corruption. But the presidency has faulted the decision of the NGC to recall the affected judges, stating that the body is trying to protect the suspected judges from prosecution, even as the investigation is still ongoing. Now, a political commentator and lawyer, Dr. Fasi Yusuf, joins us now to discuss this. It's good to have you join us right now. Thank you very much and good morning. Good right. morning. Yeah. It's so... Uh, or let me even ask this question. How interesting do you see the development between the NJC, the federal government? Interesting do you see the development between the NJC, the federal government, what, when they are coming up? Or how embarrassing is it? Well, I think it's rather sad. Um, you know, we have three arms of government. The executive, the uh, judicature, huh. and the lawmaking arm. So if two arms of government are fighting over a particular issue, then it calls for concern. I think uh, um, one is embarrassed by the situation, especially as a lawyer and as, as a stakeholder in the Nigerian project. Uh, to me, as I think it's something that should have been sorted out. And I think both sides may have a point, but at the end of the day, the country is the worst for it. All right, let's look at the points of both sides. Yes. The NJC says, okay, these men have been alleged to be corrupt, and they've not been charged, apart from Ademola, they've not been charged to court. And they, they, they are, their offices are, are just wallowing there. Cases are, are piling up in their offices. So until you have these charges against them, why not go back to work? Well, the legal dictum that justice delayed is justice denied. See, these justices and uh, judges have been denied justice, and ordinarily uh, they should be able to have their job back, especially when the executive is not ready to prosecute them. Because, I mean, we, 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 in the hype we had, one will have thought that uh, uh, the executive will have put his house in order, and uh, something concrete and uh, something decisive will have been done. So, in the absence of that, uh, one will not blame the uh, National Judicial Council that much, but at the same time, if you, we want to look at the the issue of credibility, the issue of image, and the signal we are sending to the outside world. Will these judges or justices have the same confidence to dispense justice to all manners of people without affection, ill will, without intimidation, without harassment, without looking at their back? That look, hey they could still come after me. And would the other man be happy to appear before a, a justice or a judge that is having an unconcluded uh, matter? Would you, would, you, would, you, would you implement the law that's coming from the National Assembly? Who is to implement that? As a Nigerian, would you, the laws coming, the bills being passed by the National Assembly as we speak, a lot of bills are being passed by the National, National Assembly. Yes, no, would no. you enjoy the benefits of some of those bills coming from the National Assembly? I, as an individual. Yes, would you, sir? Yeah, well, I'm duty bound unless, the, unless you subject that law that has been signed to law to scrutiny, or perhaps you've challenged the validity of such a law. Otherwise, it's, 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 a, it's a valid law. The Senate president is facing charges. Would you, yeah. because of that, say, jettison the laws coming from the National Assembly? No. Okay, so what's, what's different from, from, from the Senate president's case and the judges? Well, as you say, they are like Caesar's wife. They must live beyond reproach. And justice is not only seen to have been done, but it must man manifestly be seen to have been done. You see, the, the legal profession is different from other professions because in law, we always say that it is better for one, for only a good person to go scot-free than for one innocent soul to be convicted. And when you're appearing before a judge, you are hoping that justice will be dispensed without affection, a will. And as I said, 
a judge or a justice of the Supreme, uh, Supreme Court or Court of Appeal that has been indicted and we are waiting prosecution, will be looking at his back. The confidence is no longer there. Mm. And the man appearing before him will not have that confidence I may even challenge him that, look, I don't want you to handle this case because you have a case hanging on your neck. Mm -hmm. All right, let, let's put it point blank. Is it right for the NJC to have called for the reinstatement of these justices? Well, legally, it might be right, but morally, it is wrong. <laughs> okay, let, let's have the difference now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, in law, where there's a distinction between law and morals. Mm. Something may be morally right, but may be legally wrong. Okay. And something may be legally right and be morally wrong. All right. So there are two sides to a coin. And I want to pontificate that when you have a relationship, it is better for AJC, AJC to have advised this justice and judges to resign and all the entitlements paid are pending when the case will be disposed of. That's on, on the moral side of On things. the moral side. Mm -hmm. But on the on the legal side. On the side of the law, every accused person is present I mean is presumed innocent until the coroner is proved. Yes. So if the government has not succeeded in proving its own case mm -hmm. and it has not even succeeded in uh, uh, making them to appear before mm. a court of competent jurisdiction for trial. Mm. Then for how long will they continue to wait? Hmm. Okay, the, uh, the essay to the president on prosecution, Okoli Obono Obala, says that uh, some, some of those cases, even the Ademola's case, even though he's been uh, accused yeah, right now, to, that uh, there is an appeal. An appeal. Yeah, not then, only an appeal, yeah. I understand it's also going to the court of conduct bureau. Mm. Okay, but Ozokam had made some point, interesting point to say, okay. Until That's interesting to you. An interesting point to me, <laughs> yes, to you. to you that says, until an appell appellate court sets aside the judgment of the lower court, that judgment subsists. Yes. Okay, so where, where's the contention here? The contention is that, as I said, as a judge, you're like Caesar's wife. You must live beyond reproach. Once it, uh, you cast any doubt on a judge, I mean, it tells a lot of stories. It sends a lot of signal because this is somebody that is de deciding the fate of another person. And yet, his own fate is yet to be decided. So, uh, morally and legally speaking, such a person is devoid of any moral right or legal right to pretend of the affairs of a fellow uh, citizen who is appearing before him. So, so what scenarios can play going forward now? Because uh, you were talking about the scenario the that can play itself is mm. the judiciary might be embarrassed right. if government decides in the long run, or perhaps with the wake up call received from the National Judicial Council, may decide to expedite action and take these people to court, or because you never can say mm. they may win the case and they may lose. But the problem is that these people have been charged to court and they will have been embarrassed. Mm. Okay. If you look at the provision of the of the I mean the mandate of the NJC based on the Constitution 153, mm -hmm. they do not have prosecutorial powers. Sure, yeah, sure. So all they do is a discipline, investigate and discipline. And I think do you think they've exhausted that mandate in terms of uh, these judges? Well, I, th I think we can only speculate. It's in the, it will be in the realm of speculation, you know. And uh, we were not there when the decision was arrived at, and we, one may not really know the, the totality of the evidence before the NJC, before arriving at the, at the decision to recall uh, this uh, justice and the judges uh, to their job. But at the same time, it is expedient that the full information is given out to, uh, to Nigerians so that we are able to decipher how to analyze uh, the situation. I was not there, so I may not know. We, just, we can only base our analysis on what they've told us. Okay. All right. Let, let's bring in Foladeli to give us uh, a reaction on social media here, how Nigerians are reacting to this development. Fola, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Mm -hmm. good morning Busalami. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. Yusuf. Drama, drama, drama. Yeah. And Nigerians are saying a lot, <laughs> believe me. So let's check out some of their reactions. Mm. 
Moa Juventus says the FG had ample time to file charges against them and failed. You cannot suspend them indefinitely until it pleases the FG to file charges. Arise Nigeria says, high time stopped the child's play. They have not been proven guilty at all. Now it's clear it's a personal vendetta. Dennis K. Eze says, the acquittal of these justices by the court and subsequent recall by the NJC clearly shows that they were being persecuted by this government. Uluagbim Nija says, e EFCC and DSS lost against them in court, which shows, it simply, which shows rather that EFCC is selective in the anti-graft war and just persecuting people. Charles Abayomi says, when Buhari wanted to pick someone outside judiciary as CJN, all cried foul. Why would NJC hurriedly reinstate suspected ju judges rather, so FG can't appeal? Oyo says, they should be retired and not recalled back to the bench. <laughs> and the last one here from Leonard Ebute, he says, that's what happens when EFCC arrests for propaganda without a thought as to how to properly make a case. Mr. Yusuf, I wanted your reaction to this last tweet here. Um, Leonard says, that's what happens when EFCC arrests for propaganda without a thought as to how to make a proper case. <laughs> well, uh, propaganda might not be the right word as a communicator. Well, you can say media hype. But propaganda to me, I mean, when you talk about propaganda, you are talking about bombarding somebody with info, I mean, with information, uh, brainwashing, man management, mm. manipulation, and all that. So, uh, where does that all mm. come in? Uh -huh. But do you agree with this point about how the EFCC needs to put in more time into putting their cases properly, uh, forward properly? You recall that the whole thing was started by DSS and the SSS, mm. not the SSS, yeah. because there's no place in the constitution where you have the SSS, it's state security service. So the SS, I mean, SSS took it upon itself to usurp the function of the Nigerian police, the function of the Economic and Financial Crime Commission, and at the end of the day, that's the outcome because they are ill equipped mm. to handle such a situation. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So and in any case, you know that there has been a supremacy war between the State Security Service and the FCC. So, and they are working at cross purposes. Yeah. Hmm. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, let, let's get that clarification. Yeah. You were saying there is no DSS because they often say DSS uh, Directorate of Director Security. Director 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 Security. Security. No, it is State Security Service. That's what we have in the Constitution. So, where does the DSS come from? It, oh, it has pleased them to use that uh, acronym and uh, to use that. But uh, we uh, see we see it even on their on their badges when they're going on yeah, an operation. You, you see know, DSS. You know, Nigerians would like to create things and they would like to 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 go against the law of the country. So, to so me, the law the law does not recognize any nah, agency nah, called DSS. It is, no. okay. So it's still SSS. Yeah. Okay. So also, okay, so back to the point you're making about the the the, the SSS. Are you stopping <laughs> <laughs> you stopping I mean yes. their powers that they shouldn't have even gone there in the first instance. Yes. So from the get go something uh, went wrong. Yes. You know, remember it was coined what was it coined then in the type of operation? Extinct operation. Extinct, Extinct yes. operation. Oh, yes. Mm. And, what, not like that. It was something that was known to everybody. The Nigerian police, they have a special branch that could undo something like that. You also have UFCC, that even the function of UFCC transcends beyond financial crimes. It, not goes, it goes into terrorism. But you know that there's no love laws between SSS and the FCC of recent. You remember why they were trying to have the confirmation of Magu? It was the same agency of government that mm. was writing against an agent of the government. And both of them and are they, all on the would have presidency. the presidency mm. to have taken care of the situation. But what we have found today is as a result of the inaction of uh, the state of inertia of the, uh, of the presidency. Okay, now let, let us look at the ideals. What kind of interface should have been there between the NJC and the EFCC regarding this, this, this issue? Matter, yes. Well, what we have thought that uh, the State Security Service, because you're talking about the security, uh, the, the, the internal security of the country, and the uh, threat to life, uh, uh, threat to property, um, terrorism, and so many other things. And there should have been an interface, I mean, liaise, they offer advice, the intelligence, collaboration, and what have you. But it's lacking in this particular case. So we might be talking about sabotage somewhere along the line. 
because the Nigerian police might be looking. And in any case, it is because of the ineptitude of the Nigerian police that we're having all these agencies being duplicated. If the Nigerian police had been alive to this responsibility, the country would not be where it is today. So if the State Security Service is making incursion into the responsibility of another agency, the tendency is that there will be supremacy war. And there, there could be sabotage along the line. And I cannot read that out. Because if a file is sent to EFCC yes. by SSS, mm. they will sabotage it. And I'm not saying Magu will do it, but some people might think that, look, if you're challenging the assistance of EFCC or the leadership of EFCC, this is the time to pay you back and mm. to render you impotent. Okay, so you won't blame the MGC, you won't no. blame the MGC from, com from coming in right remember, now. I'm not blaming. Yeah, it's something with my fine. place to blame. Let my MGC. judges not suffer for this. What I've come here to do is to analyze the situation. Yes. Mm. yes. All right, Dr. Fasi Yusuf, thank you very much for coming on the My program. Pleasure. Dr. Fasi Yusuf, thank you very much for coming on the My program pleasure. this thank morning. You, thank sir. you, Thank you. Right. Let's go on a break and then we come back uh, on the next uh, discussion now.